Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own brioche bread. And here's the list of the ingredients that you will need for this recipe. This makes one loaf of brioche. Brioche is a French bread which is enriched with some butter and that gives it this characteristic flavor and it's absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna start by activating the yeast. I'm using fresh yeast for making this dough. And for that, I'm using a little bit of the flour. And I'm gonna add as my liquid some lukewarm milk. I'm gonna take my fresh yeast and just break it apart on top of that flour that I put aside. And if you don't have fresh yeast, you can also use dry yeast. You only need to use half of the amount that I'm quoting in this recipe. So in goes the milk and the warmth from the milk is gonna start working with the yeast. And this is a great way to test if the yeast that you have is still active. So I'm just giving this a good mix, making sure everything is incorporated. And once it's nice and smooth like this, it's ready to just let it do its thing. I'm just covering it with a cloth and putting it aside in a warm spot for about 20 to 30 minutes. Once the time has elapsed, you will see that the yeast has made this mixture very sticky and it kind of increased its volume. And that's what you're looking for. And at this point, we are ready to add all of our ingredients except for the butter. So we're gonna add some sugar to this, two whole eggs, and all of the ingredients, when you're working with a yeast dough, all of the ingredients should be at room temperature. And I like to crack the eggs on the side of the bowl before incorporating them. And this way, you really make sure that you don't get any eggshells in your dough. Now for this task, I'm going to use my stand mixer with a hook attachment. And I'm going to dump the rest of my flour to this mixture. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can also do this by hand. Just bear in mind that it's gonna take a bit longer maybe, depending on how fast you can work with the dough in terms of kneading it. So I'd like to start this on low speed. I'm using a KitchenAid mixer and this is uh, speed number two. And I'm adding the salt once the mixer is going. And the reason for this is that salt and yeast should never be combined directly and uh, I just like to do this after the yeast has the chance to incorporate other ingredients into the dough. So once everything comes together, I start adding my room temperature unsalted butter. And I do this a uh, tablespoon at a time. Just making sure everything is incorporated. If you need to scrape the sides of the bowl every other minute or so, feel free to do so. Once you've incorporated all of that delicious butter in the dough, you need to let this mix on medium to low speed for about 10 to 15 minutes. And the dough should pull aside from the bowl like this, and it should have some elasticity to it. The dough will be very sticky thanks to all of that butter, which is at room temperature at this point and overworked. So it's time to let this rest in a warm place for it to ferment. And I just like to cover this with a damp cloth. And my fermentation time is about one to one and a half hours. Once you've completed the fermentation step, you can take it out of the bowl and work it a little bit to deflate it. And we're ready to move this into the fridge and let it cool down. This is gonna help set that butter and the dough will become a lot easier to work with. So just work it a little bit, put it in a clean bowl, 
and just cover that with some plastic, some cling film and you're ready to put it in the fridge either overnight, which is what I'll be doing or you can just let this sit in your fridge for about two to three hours. Once you've chilled your dough long enough, you should be able to work with it and shape it into the final form of your brioche. The dough really hardens in the fridge and that's because all of that butter helps make it so. So I'm just taking a flat spatula just to help it get out of the bowl. And once it's out, we are ready to work with it. Now we're ready to shape into the final form of our brioche. And what I'm gonna do is take the dough. First of all, I put this in the scale, weigh it out and divide the number by eight. I wanna be able to get eight equal parts of the dough which I will then take and shape them into smaller balls. And it's important to get an even loaf. That means each of these eight parts have to be the same shape, the same volume, essentially the same weight. So we have to be a bit precise. I'm currently eyeballing eight pieces of the dough. Now to be precise, I have to weight them out. So. I divide the total weight of the dough that I got initially, divided by eight, and that's the weight that I want each of these pieces to be. Once I've measured this out, I can move on to prepare my pan. And I'm just taking a little bit of butter and just going in every single corner, every single crack, making sure I cover everything because believe me, this makes a huge difference when you try to unmold this. You don't want to forget this step. It's happened to me before that I forget to grease the pan and I basically had to cut my brioche loaf out of there. It wasn't pretty, so don't forget to do that. Um, because as you start shaping these miniature dough balls, you want to place them in, in the pan. So it's best to do it at this stage. So I'm shaping the dough balls and placing them straight into the pan. Um, I'm kind of tucking them together. I'm not doing this super neatly. They will expand as they rise in the second fermentation. And you should be able to fit exactly eight miniature dough balls. And it will look something like this. So at this point you are done, you just need to let this double in size and just place some cling film on top of your pan and let it sit in a warm spot for about two to three hours, it depends on your yeast. And once it has proofed, you can prepare your egg wash. I have a whole egg, whisked it together. And just look at that brioche and how it expanded during this proving process. You can really see the importance of having uh, even dough balls because it really gives you the overall shape of the loaf. And again, with any dough that has proofed, you want to be quite gentle with any glazing or egg wash, just to make sure you don't pierce through the dough and make it collapse. So this is ready for my oven. I'm gonna bake this at 180 degrees Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes. And yes, this does tend to brown up at the top early on. So I suggest that you check at around minute 15 that it's not browning too quickly. If it is, you can put some aluminum foil over it and just let it continue to bake. Now, you want to let this cool completely before you take it out of the pan. And I do actually um, like using an offset spatula to help the job. So here we go, it's out of the pan. Thank goodness. Um, and I wanted to show you what the pan looks like. You can see that in this corner here, there was a bit of sticky mess situation. This can be from the egg glaze dripping into it or maybe I missed a spot during the buttering process. 
But in any case, it was a successful job getting it out. You can see that the spatula hurt that bit, but you can't see it anymore. So no problem. And look at that golden brown color. I can't wait to show you guys what that looks like inside. So without further ado, let me just cut into this. I'm using a serrated knife because of all this crispy exterior. I don't want to damage anything. And look at that crumb. It's actually a very light and airy bread. I love eating this fresh. You can also toast it and serve it with some jam if you want to. And if you have some leftovers, this is great to make French toast with. And that's the signature of a good brioche right there. When you pull it apart, it should be stringy like this. I cannot wait to try this. Um, I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more recipes and more content.